Hi, I'm Louise, the model maker here at Timber Kits, and I'm going to show you how to get through some of the trickier stages of building the door base player. Right, on stage B5, before you glue this block in place, one tip is to sometimes this sharp edge will catch on that as it moves up and down. Just round that off with a bit of sandpaper and wax it. And the same for those two points there. And also use a little bit of wax on the inside. Then when you glue that block in place, it will move up and down without hitting. You get to stage B6, the gluing on of the back. And just do a little test before you actually put the glue in place. Hold that like that and just gently, not too far, move that up and down. If the inside of that block hits the bottom edge of that and restricts you and stops you doing that, just lift that back off, fold up your sandpaper and just file that about a millimetre lower until when you put it on the movement's not restricted. And then you can glue it in place. I've got a tip for helping you get the angle right on stage C2. Put a little bit of glue on the edge of that block only. Push it, uh, the bamboo, through and push it against it. Then, use a ruler. You want to line up the edge of that with the edge of the ruler. In line with the pelvis there. And there you see, it's straight. And then just hold the block in that position until the glue starts to go off. And leave it to dry. Next is stage C3. It's really important, as you see there, that the legs are really nice and floppy, otherwise you won't get that nice tilting action when you turn the handle. Notice how floppy I've got this and that. And this peg here, if it's a little bit tight when you push it on, sand that until it's thin enough and wax to get a nice floppy effect and then do the space on the end. On stage C7 you're putting the arms together. It's very important as you see here in the model that his left arm is very floppy, the articulation. And later on this one is glued rigid, so it doesn't matter how stiff that is. Now when you put these joints together you will find they're quite firm. We couldn't get them both different. So um, you've got one stiff one, that's fine. But the other one, you need to make it loose. And to do that, you just need to sand quite firmly until you get that. I won't have done enough with that quick sand, but get it so it's nice and floppy like that. And then put the peg in place. Very important, that left arm, all the joints are very floppy. In D4, you're going to be putting this can follow with the peg in it underneath. It's very important that it's as loose and easy as that. If the hole down through there is a little bit tight, either sand the peg down till it's thinner, or if you have a small round file, file it out. And then wax the peg. It must just drop down freely. We're at E6 now, the positioning of his legs on the base. You put glue all around the bottom of that foot and the peg, locate it, lift that up out of the way and then push that thin peg through that hole and line up his foot so that it is central over that peg. The next stage is to glue this spacer on underneath his right foot. Now tilt it forward and you will see underneath there is a small peg coming out from underneath his foot there. Put glue on the whole of the surface of the spacer as well as inside, uh, contrary to what it says in the instructions. And then locate it and push it up really nice and tight so it really brings the ankle down on the surface. And there. You'll see that holding that tight. Now, while the glue is still drying on this left foot, bring that back up over there. And then just gently turn the handle. And there you see, 
the leg action on the right leg. That's absolutely fine. Right, you're on the last page now, E10. Drop the body into place, locating that larger peg in the middle hole and the little peg with that. There you go. And then just do a gentle test run and that is the kind of action you should be getting. Three, two, one. Right, you want, before you put the left hand in place, to get the neck of the double base as slippery as possible so there's no resistance for the hand to catch on, to slide up and down. Really nice and shiny. The left hand and push that long peg through there. And then the front of the hand in front of the neck and the peg behind it. And push through. There. Tight. Then glue this little spacer on the end. And you should get the hand moving up and down nicely. The very final thing you need to do on the double pace player is glue all the joints in his right hand because that is completely rigid and it moves purely by the rocking of this leg and the body to make it swing in front of the double pace. So if you just put blobs of glue there, there, there and there and move it into the position you'd like and turn the handle and you want it to swing across like that. So it'll take a bit of playing around to get it to the angle you want. It's best to actually set it in angle when you've got it at that point. Set everything as you want, leave it to dry, and then it will just fall away and come back again.